me got to see what you see You are doing a great work in me I've decided I can't stand still No, you have given me purpose All my, all my heart is yours All my, all my life is yours I will, I will make a move for you to show you. It's called a ripple tank and it will help us see waves in motion and it will help us learn how we can make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. I always thought you needed something like an ocean to make a wave, but that's not the case. A wave can start with something small like love. When you show love to someone, it starts a wave of love that spreads out to more and more people. It's what you might call the ripple effect. You might not have seen the ripples in that shot, so let's see it again in slow motion. See how the ripples got bigger and bigger? That's what happens when you show love. And that's not the only wave you can make in the world. You can make waves of peace. Waves of joy. Woo. Waves of patience. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. No. Come on. I am so sorry. Lost my temper a little there. Well, maybe more than a little. <laughs> Guess I didn't make a wave of patience, huh? The good news is our story today is all about patience. It looks like I need some patience today. And I'm uh, gonna need a mop, too. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God 
and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 18. King Solomon, one of the wisest men to ever live, collected many wise sayings in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 15, verse 8 tells us, A person with a bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. Let's see how this truth might play out in our lives today. Izzy stared at her mom in disbelief. But theater camp is the best week all summer. I feel totally fine. Dad tested positive. He's okay, but he's got to quarantine, and I think the rest of us better stay home this week too. This is so not fair. Just like that, Izzy went from a whole week of fun with her friends at theater camp to watching her younger brothers at home while her mom worked. Can't they just go over to Aunt Rena's? That was the plan, but we don't want anyone else to get sick. We're not sick. It's just a week, sweetie. We'll do something fun later in the summer to make up for it. <sighs> the next morning, Mom rushed through the kitchen. Um, I've got to be on a Zoom call in five minutes. Jack, Ben, you listen to Izzy, okay? She's only two years older than me. She's in charge. I'm going to play mind build. Uh, no screens until after lunch. Get outside this morning. Outside? Or read. Do something creative. It was supposed to be practicing Hamilton songs. Mom headed upstairs, leaving Izzy with her brothers. OK, guys, pick something for breakfast. French toast. Great. Get the eggs, Jack. Get the eggs, Jack. Jack! I'll get them. Bread, vanilla. Don't you need a recipe or something? It's in my head. I'm not eating something you just made up in your head. I'm not. Everyone loves my. Izzy turned to see Ben reaching up for eggs on the top fridge shelf. Careful! <gasps> Izzy stared in horror. Fifteen eggs had exploded all over the kitchen floor. <sighs> Izzy exploded too. Ben, you're such a klutz! I'm sorry. Don't yell at him! Yeah, well, if you'd gotten the eggs like I said, he wouldn't have dropped them. I'm eating cereal. <sighs> Izzy grabbed a roll of paper towels and shoved them at Jack. Not till after you clean up those eggs. No fair. Yeah, well, life's not fair. <sighs> Izzy slammed the fridge door shut, which made two cereal boxes on the top of the fridge tip over and land in the egg mess. You can clean up your own mess. Jack stalked out, slamming the kitchen door behind him. I'm hungry. Izzy grabbed an egg-covered box of cereal out of the mess. Here. Need milk. I can't get the milk till I clean up your stupid mess. I said I was sorry. You're being mean. Ben sulked his way out the other side of the kitchen. Sighing, Izzy tore a handful of paper towels out and started to clean up the egg mess. Mom peered inside the door, earbuds in. I'm on mute. What is going on? I... Jack was being a pain and Ben dropped the eggs and... I just lost it. Mom sighed. She typed a quick message on her screen, took out her earbuds, and set down her computer. Then she grabbed some wet wipes and started to clean alongside Izzy. I know this whole week isn't fair. I know your brothers can be annoying, but I really need you to take a deep breath when you want to snap. Why does everybody think deep breathing will fix the world? It doesn't, but it does give you a chance to think, to ask God for help and remember what's true. Mom gingerly tapped on her screen with an, an uneggy finger. Read this for me, okay? Izzy bent over the screen, trying not to drip egg. A person with bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. Proverbs 15, 18. I bet King Solomon or whoever wrote that down didn't have younger brothers. Trust me, Solomon's family was not perfect either. I'm sorry, Mom. Hey, I feel like snapping too. But right now, I have to jump back on this call. Think you can calm things down with your brothers? Yeah, I guess. Izzy finished mopping up the egg mess. Then she checked the pantry and then went upstairs to the boys' room where Jack was sketching furiously and Ben glowered from his bunk, clutching his stuffed lion. Guys, I shouldn't have yelled. I'm sorry, but... I did find this new box of sugar bombs way in the back of the pantry. Oh, yeah! Mom only lets us have those for snack. It's a special week. 
And I'll make sure we have eggs to do French toast tomorrow. So the three siblings marched back down to the kitchen for giant bowls of sugar bombs, yay! Ben managed to splash his milk all over the table. Oops. Ben! Izzy could see both Ben and Jack brace themselves. She took a deep breath. It's fine. I'll help you clean up. And after breakfast, we can get out the slip and slide. Yes! You're going in the mud. No, it wasn't the way Izzy thought she would be spending her week, but if she could keep her temper, maybe she would have fun after all. One of the proverbs of Solomon is this, a person with a bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. So what kind of things make you impatient? Do you get angry at other people when they don't act the way you think they should? Or when they get in your space or mess with your stuff? Do you get angry when things happen beyond your control? Like accidents or sicknesses or bad weather? Maybe you get angry at yourself when you mess up. There are a lot of things that can make us impatient. We wanna make waves, right? Start a ripple effect. But when you're not patient, you can make a wave too. More like a tsunami. Yeah. Patience is one of the hardest virtues to get good at. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. So when you feel like you're about to lose it, you can try taking deep breaths. Or you can count to 10 or 20 or however long it takes. Or you can talk to God. When you put your trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit can help you show patience. When you learn patience, you can go from someone who makes a mess to someone who calms things down. The one thing to remember today is this, be patient with each other. Everyone you see has their own struggles with impatience. So help each other out. And when you do mess up and lose your patience, Take the time to make things right. I'll see you next time. <laughs>